Well, the countdown is on. It is less than 100 days away from the opening game in Paris between the All Blacks and France. 96 days and counting. <laughs> My welcome back into the breakdown. That is the next generation of stars, the next super rugby stars, the next All Blacks players. Currently in our under-20 program, you've played in the Junior World Cup. Angus, how good is this competition? Oh, m many moons ago, uh, 13, 2010. So you had a stacked lineup. Um, oh, You're all playing super now. Not, not as much as the year after. That was like the Bodie Barrett and, and all those guys. Um, Julian Savia, Tyler Blindell, the current Hurricanes coach. But we played over in Argentina. Um, beat Aussie uh, convincingly in the final. Um, but an awesome experience as a young 19, 20 year old to go with a bunch of mates on tour to a new country um, and, and experience, you know, that side of, of almost like a professional sort of environment um, at a national level. Yeah, Batesy, I mean, you've been involved in the under 20s program, right? You know how important this stepping stone is. Yeah, it certainly is, and I suppose the question is: is what is it for? Why? Why? What are the New Zealand twenties for? Is it to win, or is it to give them experience to go forward? Um, and they've probably been a little bit in the wilderness the last couple of years because of COVID. Mm. So now they're going to get opened up right up into the world. Because you've got to remember, the Six Nations teams have been playing Six Nations against each other. You've got the most experience at this <coughs> age group, this level. You've seen these players, rock star backline. Yeah. Dynamic loose forwards, yep. are our type five slow to develop compared to the other nations around the world? Well, I think, and I talk around. I talk around. For I'll give you a perfect example. Game one, um, two of the props were from Auckland. Okay, um, one of them only lasted four minutes. Okay, uh, that that one of the tight head props that lasted four minutes. He's been a rugby player for 18 months. Okay, so he's got 18 months of experience as a rugby player. Before that, he was a league player. So he's done really, really well to get there. The other guy was at a uh, Ben was at a St Kent's um, High School, St Kent's College. Sorry, he was a loose forward at school. Two years. He's had two years out of school. He's had surgery on his shoulder for both those years. Okay, so he's probably played, he's probably played, put them together, they've probably played 30 games of prop between them, you know what I mean? So therefore they're going to take a while, they're going to take a while and they're going to get a few hidings on the way. Um, you know, and that's just, that's just reality, so that's why I ask the question, what is this for? Are the expectations to win the Junior World Cup? We know how much success that we have had with this side in the past. They've won six titles, New Zealand, uh, four straight in the first four years, but there hasn't been tournaments the last three years due to COVID. The Baby Blacks, well, they kick off their campaign in just under three weeks' time. This is what their pool looks like. They play Wales, they play France, who, as Banks has said, have been playing in the Six Nations under-20s competition, and then Japan. They basically need to win all three of those games, Jeff. Do you give them a chance? I mean, we've played Aussie twice, lost to them once, and beaten them by a single point. But I just said it. We've got a rock star back line, and we've got dynamic loose forwards, and we've got players with super rugby experience. I don't doubt we can win these games. What we'll have to do is we'll have to get a measure of parity up front. Mm. The Wallaby side, the under-20 team, 
They put us to the sword, not just in the first game, the second game and the second half. They dominated uh, us up front. So we're going to have to learn very quickly how we win games if we are compromised in some of those areas of the game. Well, they're coached at the moment by the new Hurricanes head coach. Congratulations to Clark Laidlaw, who, of course, was there in the past as an assistant and has recently been with the Sevens program. What do you think Clark Laidlaw brings into a Super Rugby environment? Well, what he probably does is he brings a, can create a great atmosphere and hopefully he does that same with the 20s as well because you look at those sevens boys, any of the sevens boys that come back to us, be they really young, all right, you think about the Shea Clarks, you think guys like that that come back with us, they're really well-rounded young men, Peyton Spencer as well so whatever he does down there, they can speak well in front of the environment, they're not shy to share their ideas or anything like that, so he obviously creates an environment where people, doesn't matter how old they are, can feel comfortable in sharing their ideas and that creates bias and in the environment. Mm. Yeah, and I think it will complement with what they've got, Corey Jane with the defence and Tyler Blinder, who I said played 20s with, I think a great offensive mind. And having that head coach role, you're not always necessarily the, the hands-on technical, tactical coach everything. Sometimes it is about the people managing, setting the theme, setting the culture, and then, you know, you're really pulling the strings of, of where you want to be heading. Just quickly, they've had a small lead in time, this group. They haven't had a lot of time together in terms of preparation. They needed a coach, an experienced coach, to come in with this group, to set that culture, to bring them together. My understanding is that's what he's done really, really well. So that's what Clark is going to do with the Hurricanes, continue to build on that. He's losing some leadership next year with Artie Savier heading offshore. So I look at that and I go, Clark laidlaw has got a big job to do here with the 20s. It's a short-term gig in terms of bringing them together and then he'll, he'll transfer over to the Hurricanes and do, it. I think, a really good job. Super Rugby is going to be completely different, though. It's wow. a completely different challenge. Has Less... anyone got a voce di Corridoio this week? No, JK, he's in Italy, so we don't have the ear of the Pope, but who are we thinking? Crusaders head coach, uh, Blues head coach in Moana Pacifica, any names? Are you in the running for Blues head coach? No, I'm not. Because <laughs> no, I tell you what, I mean, no. we're, we're hearing from everybody else, but we're not hearing any from the Blues. No, no, not? I'm not, no. You no. don't know anything? No, I don't know anything. Yeah, I think... that, that grin tells <laughs> Saying something okay. else, I don't know anything. Right, look, all I know the conversations is Rob Penny and Vern Cotter are the two most experienced coaches who are out there, and they've interviewed down at the Crusaders. Mm, interesting. Well, I have more for you next week on the breakdown. Thank you for your brilliant work, uh, as always, Jeff. I was so kind to them night. today. <laughs> Good night. So kind to them. Forward smarts. Area's <laughs> first chance to run of the night. The big bend on Gilbert, and off he goes. Layers away to the right. This weekend for the Highlanders. 140 games for the Hurricanes. One of the very best to ever wear the number two jersey. Yeah. Now away goes Cody Taylor, puts his head down and scores again. Drops the pass off the Barrett. Now the chance from Josh Norby. And he scores. Oh, a couple of old mates having a go here. Taylor and Coles are still going at it. Sort it out, OK? <laughs> <laughs> That's classic. Cozy as well. It really is.